Okay, if you're going to anneal brass, some things you're going to need is a heat source. I use just a Coleman propane bottle with a torch. I prefer, I don't know if you're going to see this on the camera, but I prefer the wider flame instead of more like the pin flame. I think it heat soaks the metal better. Uh, you're going to need some way of determining the temperature of the brass. Some people just go in a dark room and watch for a certain color change. I don't like that method. I don't believe it's precise enough. Um, you can use an infrared, uh, an infrared thermometer. I, um, I find they're hit or miss because um, so, the brass is so shiny sometimes you won't get a reading. So what I use is Temple Stick and Temple Lac. This stuff is used in industry. It's very accurate. And all it is is basically a paint that's going to burn off or melt off at a certain temperature. So I have 700 and 650 and what I'll do is I'll do it on a camera here take the inside of the case and paint it on you see that just coat it on the mouth inside of the mouth of the case and I'll take a little bit of the 650, probably, I don't know, mark it halfway down the case. I really prefer the, the Temple Lac versus the Temple Stick. Because this is actually meant for, you have something hot and you swipe this across and see if it melts. Not for marking something, because it, it just comes off chalky. It doesn't work very well. I just put a lot on there just to make sure that I'm not getting heat down here on the base of the case softening it because you don't want this part of the case to be soft so you want here to be soft and here to be hard because this sits in the chamber and a portion of this case right here is unsupported by the chamber of the bolt face so if you anneal this part and soften it what will happen is it'll lose its ductile strength and it'll blow out which is a bad time to give you an example of what I'm talking about here's some factory brass See if you can notice that, there we go, now it's focused. The color difference, about right here. So this brass is annealed to about right here, which is, you know, I don't know, a little over half, maybe 60% of the case. So you want this portion of the case to be hard, to have low malle malleability but high ductile strength. And you want this to be more malleable with lower ductile strength. Because what happens is this sits in the chamber, like so, the firing pin hits the primer, it ignites the powder, the pressure builds, and this portion of the case will expand and create a seal in the chamber, preventing gas from leaking back. Once, once that's done, after it's fired and the pressure has reduced, this will actually shrink down so you can extract the case and then resize it. So let's get all these done up real quick. So now I've got all these coated. Something that comes in handy, um, I'm at, this is actually, I'm using an, a, what's called an e-torx, a number size 18, just because I happen to need e-torx sockets for working on my car. You can use like a half inch socket, anything will work. So a, a drill that'll move in low speed, like this one will, your heat source and something to catch the hot brass in. Um, you can either use like a metal or a glass container filled with water if you want to quench right away, which is what I'll do, or you can just let them air cool. Um, I'm aiming the... There it goes. So you're aiming the heat right in here the majority of the heat and it'll transfer enough to anneal this part and to anneal this part and you're just watching the the temple act to see when it melts there 
this. This stuff does kind of stink. You might want to have a fan on to use this. I prefer doing it this way than to use the high speed. There's less chance of that case flying out of there. There must have been water in that one. I like to do it on the inside of the case because you'll know that it's annealed all the way through. A lot of times you just put it on the outside, it's in direct contact with the flame. So it might be melting before the actual brass has reached the recrystallization temperature. Okay, in the second part of the video, I just took some up-close recordings with the GoPro. Um, just to give you a sort of an idea of what's happening. Basically what the deal is, is you're going to aim the flame just below the neck and the shoulder and you're gonna wanna soften the neck shoulder and the area of the cartridge probably at least one-third to halfway down the cartridge so while we're watching this video I just wanna take a minute to do a little deeper dive on what's going on when we're kneeling brass first of all <clears throat> what is brass? brass is a generic term used for an alloy of copper and zinc the most, cop the most common alloy for cartridge cases is 70% copper and 30% tin, or somewhere near that. The brass is both a malleable and, a and ductile, meaning you can easily shape it and it can withstand high strain loads without rupturing. Brass is also a good conductor of heat and electricity as well as being a low friction metal. These characteristics, these the ability for it to be malleable and ductile, the fact that it's a ro low friction metal, and that it has high heat transference makes it absolutely perfect metal for a cartridge case. As brass has worked, in other words, as we fire it in a gun or resize it or dies, it work hardens. It becomes more and more hard the harder you work it. The harder it is, the more brittle it becomes. So if we continue to fire brass or, and work harden our brass, eventually what we're going to get is we're going to start getting split necks or casings rupturing in the chamber. The solution to this, and the way we get more firings and more life out of our brass, is something called annealing. What annealing is, is it's a process in metallurgy where you heat, it's a heat treatment process where you heat the metal, and as a result of this heating for a certain time and certain temperature, the metal becomes soft. Now the goal in annealing cartridge cases is we're going to use what's called a differential heat treatment that means the one case the one piece the one cartridge case is going to be at different hardnesses it's going to be softer near the mouth and the shoulder of the case than it is at the base of the case and the reason before this is if we actually soften the base of the case or the back of the case where it connects you know to the bolt you can actually have that case rupture during firing which is can be a catastrophic failure. So the most important factors in, in heat treatment are temperature and time. Now in the case of brass, generally brass will anneal at 350 degrees Celsius or about 660 degrees Fahrenheit for between 10 and 30 minutes. This all depends on how hard it was to start with and the ratio of the alloy and if there's any other metals in it. Now we obviously can't do that because if you sit there and you heat the shoulder of the case to 600 degrees because of brass is such a good conductor of heat the heat will travel to the base of the case and will soften that so fortunately what we can do is we can actually up the temperature which reduces the time so if you heat brass to about seven, 750 degrees it only needs to be in that temperature for a couple of seconds and it'll anneal and that's what we're doing here. Now I use 700 degree Tempelac um, and then air dried the brass in my case which has gotten me decent results. Um, if, you're, if you wanted to quench the brass right away I would probably go to like a 750 Tempelac and you, or you can use like the Temple Stick but the, the, the lacquer works a lot better for me as far 
as far as um, ease of use. The stick's real chalky, doesn't go down really well. There's going to be a lot of links and a lot more technical information if you're so inclined in the description of this video. And you see right here, um, the base should never get hot, and as you've seen, I'm actually using my fingers to kind of prove a point that you're able to heat that shoulder area, and, st and you should still be able to hold on to the base for a couple seconds. So here we have some um, pictures of the finished product. You'll notice the top of the case. There's some discoloration from the bottom. So that shows us that we've heat treated the top portion of the case without heat treating the bottom, which is what we're after. So these cases will be absolutely safe to fire, and we won't get split necks, and our neck tension will be um, nice and consistent.